greetings everyone and welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. If you watched my channel update video, you'll know that I've been going through a little bit of issues and I've been unable to make any videos. I have still not been able to recover the part two of my speaker upgrade, but um, I needed a new phone, so I got a new phone, so I'm using it to record. It's better than my J7, it's an A6, and the video quality on it seems pretty good. Do some adjusting here. Eh, eh, I might have to play with the exposure a little bit, but it's better. Today on the bench, we have a Facebook find for a whopping $5. I have an unsure how to pronounce Onko, I think. Oink, oinkio. There we go. Um, it's an A-8037. Just a pretty basic integrated amplifier. It's missing a balance knob, but I might be able to find one of those online somewhere. There's a whole line of these amps. So I had it for a whole $8, and my plans for it was I hoping, I was hoping it didn't work, so I'd actually have something to repair. So I've not repaired an amp in over a year. I look back at some of my personal projects on the big rack behind me. It's been over a year since I actually fixed an amp. And you wouldn't believe it. There ain't not a thing wrong with this thing. And listen, the tape switches aren't even dirty. Muting, nothing. If we turn the muting on, listen to the volume. Not scratchy. Bass knob, whoa. I want to figure out how to lock the auto exposure on this. Bass knob, not dirty. Trouble, not dirty. Balance, not dirty. Now, of course, it's only an 8 ohm stable amp. My test speakers are 4 ohms, so I have them wired in series to just the right output. But the left works too. No blown fuses. But the volume knob has this cool pointer on it, so that wins it style points from me. So my plan with this amp is pretty much just to clean it up. Just clean it, detail a little bit, and just find a use for it. Maybe just sell it later on. Now, I'm kind of excited to do a... Let's just call it a restoration. I'm kind of excited to do the restoration on this because... There's a cleaning technique on a forum site that people always post these. There's a technique you can do. You can remove the bores and simply just clean them with soap and water. Now, as long as you let it completely dry before you apply power, it's actually fine. Because the water itself isn't what's conductive. It's the impurities in it. But just discharge all your caps. And everything's waterproof. Your transistors are solid epoxy. Your ICs are solid epoxy. Your capacitors are just an aluminum can. Now, the only thing I wouldn't recommend cleaning with water is your transformers. Because they're not sealed. And water can get into the cracks and get in between your windings. And if you have a bad winding, that's going to get you a pretty bad day. I figure what we'll do now is um, we'll probably look at the back of it to see what it looks like. It's, it's a very basic amp. And then we'll take a peek at the inside. Okay, I'm... I'm kind of running out of room. My desk is a complete disaster. Back, so uh, let's see. I think we we have one unswitched outlet, two switched, A B speaker, and a bunch of inputs. That's it. Ain't nothing to it. Okay, let's get the horribly outdated Kindle out of the way, which is barely able to play a YouTube music video. Uh, I kind of cheated. I've already been on the inside of it. I actually got this a few days ago, but I wasn't able to film because we had some family over, and their bedroom is right next to mine. And I didn't want to be up at 1 o'clock in the morning, like I was, blabbing on about what I found on Facebook. So I already took the screws off. The cover just, just like all these amps, they just lift up and out. Up and out it comes. And now, we have to get a little closer. Ooh, I'm starting to sweat. It's humid in my room. I shut the fan off because it blows into the microphone of the phone. But here's the inside. As you can see, it's absolutely disgusting. But here's our heart. It's an STK4893. When I got it, I couldn't look up the model number because the guy that had it didn't have the picture of the model number. But I was hoping it had discrete, so if it was blown, I could repair it. And with discretes, if it's not a 4 ohm capable lamp, you can usually upgrade the packages with a higher heat dissipation, and you can make it 4 ohm capable. If you go back to one of my original videos of the Sherwood RV5030R, that's what I did to the center channel. 60 volt rails, 
two transistors, and it's able to run a forum load full tilt. But the data sheet for this says, uh, the data sheet says 40 watts by two at eight ohms, but the specs for this is 50 at eight ohms. But the data sheet for this also shows at a lower supply voltage, it is four ohm capable. But I don't know what supply volts this runs at, but it's got 50 volt caps in it, so I'm assuming it's probably about 35, 40 volts or so. Now what's funny about this amp is these Nijicon caps. I call them the M caps, because on the other side you can't see it on camera. They just have an M, the letter M, and they're purple. They're 50 volt, 10,000 microfarads. 50 volt, 50 watts by two. Another Fisher I have, the RS881, it has another STK, a 4191. It's also 50 watts by two. It has the exact same Nijicon purple M caps, but they're only 4,700 mics. Hmm. Cost cutting? Because Onko, or however you say this, I believe they're a little fancier than Fisher was. Nice heatsink, too. Look how thick the plate on that is. I, said, I did cheat a little bit because I didn't want to be filming while my family was here. There's only one thing that was wrong with it. This big volume knob is this big potentiometer here. When We well, can't see it now as I fix it. When I turn the knob, the whole board flexed like this. And then this indicator on the knob was scraping against the faceplate. Well, that was an easy fix. Pull the knob off. That nut was two entire turns loose. It wasn't connected at all. So now I'm going to recalibrate my pointer. Damn it. When I turn it, the indicator no longer scrapes against the faceplate, and the board doesn't flex. Oh, I almost had it on. There we go. Pretty simple lamp. Should clean up nicely. Are systems in kitchens still common?